Hey everyone, so sales are booming in your Shopify store and things are looking great. Now let me show you how to use QuickBooks to automatically create sales receipts from Shopify orders and email it to your customers. Of course, you will need a Shopify, QuickBooks and a Google account with connections added and a basic understanding of the functions of the iterator and array aggregator. Let's jump straight into the configuration. The trigger module in the scenario is the Shopify Watch Orders module and as the name suggests, it watches for orders in your Shopify store. So click on the module to configure it. You'll see that there are three fields, each with a list of options. Let's take a look. The status field, the financial status field, and fulfillment status field. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's set the status to open. And since you are sending a receipt for the payment, select paid under financial status. Lastly, let's leave the fulfillment status set to any and the limit to two so that two orders are retrieved during a single execution. Next is the iterator, which is used here to iterate through the line items array, which contains the price, quantity, name, and so on. The purpose of iterating the line items is to ensure that if there are multiple product items in a single order, all the items will be added to the receipt. Without the iterator, only the first product item in the order will be added to the receipt and the others will be excluded. Simply map the line items element output by the Shopify module to the array field. Following the iterator is the array aggregator which combines the line items that are required to create a receipt in QuickBooks into an array of collection. The purpose of aggregating the items is so that the multiple product items in the order are added to one receipt. Without the aggregation, a receipt will be created for each product item. To configure, select the iterator as a source module. Under the target structure type, select the QuickBooks Create a Sales Receipt lines. Please note, you will need to add the QuickBooks Create a Sales Receipt module for this option to be available under target structure type. To get the total price in the amount field, you need to multiply the unit price by the quantity. To do this, select the sum function found under the math functions tab. Then, map the price element outputted by the iterator within the brackets, select the multiplication operator and map the quantity element. In the quantity unit price description fields, map the corresponding elements outputted by the iterator. In the item field, enter 1 which is the code for sales in QuickBooks. Anything else in this field will result in the receipt displaying incorrectly. Next is the QuickBooks Search for Customers module. Here, search for the customer's details in your QuickBooks account using the email address since this is unique to the customer. Select Field under the Search by menu and in the filter, select the Email Address option, the Equals Text Operator and map the customer email element outputted by the Shopify module to the bottom field. Next is a router that splits the scenario into two routes. On the top route, between the router and the QuickBooks Create a Contact module is a filter. The function of this filter is to verify if the customer exists or not in your QuickBooks account. If not, the bundle will meet the filters criteria and a new contact will be created in the QuickBooks Create a Contact module. To configure the filter, map the customer ID element outputted by the QuickBooks Search for Customers module to the top field and select the Does Not Exist operator. To configure the QuickBooks Create a Customer module, map the billing address elements outputted by the Shopify Watch Orders module to the corresponding fields. In the Shipping Address fields, map the corresponding shipping elements. After the QuickBooks Create a Customer module is the QuickBooks Create a Sales Receipt module. In the Customer field, toggle the map switch and simply map the Customer ID element outputted by the Create a Customer module. In the Lines field, Toggle the map switch here as well and map the array element. Now that the receipt is created, you need to download it before sending it to your customer. In the QuickBooks Download a Sales Receipt module, simply map the Sales Receipt ID element outputted by the Create a Sales Receipt module shown here. The last module on the top route is the Gmail Send an Email module which you are probably familiar with. In the Recipient field, map the Customer Email element outputted by the Shopify module. After you enter the subject line and content, 
click add an attachment under the attachments field and select the QuickBooks download a sales receipt option. On the bottom route, between the router and the QuickBooks create a sales receipt module is the second filter. If the customer's ID exists, the bundle will meet the filters criteria and will pass through to the QuickBooks create a sales receipt module. Again, map the customer ID element to the top field and this time select the exists operator. If the customer's ID exists, there will be no need to create a new customer and the sales receipt can be created immediately. The only difference between the create a sales receipt module on the bottom route and the one on the top route is that here you need to map the customer ID element outputted by the QuickBooks search for customers module. For the last two modules, QuickBooks download a sales receipt and Gmail send an email, the setup is the same as the two on the top route. Now the scenario has been fully configured. Let's go over to Shopify to create an order as a first time buyer, mark it as paid and execute the scenario. Alright, the order was for a single product and here you can see that the order was retrieved, the bundle passed through the iterator and array aggregator correctly, not multiple products. Since it was a first time buyer, the ID did not exist, therefore met the filters criteria on the top route, a new customer was created, the sales receipt was then created, downloaded and emailed to the customer. Here's a look at the sales receipt. Now let's place another order as the same customer but this time with multiple products. And there you go. The order was retrieved, the line items were iterated, multiple products and the relevant line items were aggregated. Since the customer already exists, the bundle met the filters criteria, the sales receipt was created, downloaded and emailed to the customer. Here's a look at the sales receipt. And that's it. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and happy automating.